this is exactly how I shake all my cans. <laughs> but you know, some people have trouble doing it. And, and I can understand, especially if you have, you know, like 10 cans you have to shake for a mural or, or just whatever, you know, it's, it's a pain in the butt to have to do this for three minutes, right? So why don't we create something that makes it a little bit easier for you guys to shake your cans at home. Now, in order to create that proper up and down movement, we need to find the right tool to give it that shake. And I got just the one. Now this is a Makita Sawzall, which is pretty pricey, but if you check out your local OfferUp or Craigslist or Pawn Shop or brand new at Harbor Freight, you can find them for pretty cheap. In fact, I think the Harbor Freight one's like 30 bucks. I highly recommend getting one because you would not believe how many things you use them for. I mean, look at mine. Look how much abuse this one's taken. It's still kicking. And you know what? Today, we're gonna use it to shake some cans. Now, how the heck are we going to attach a can to a Sawzall? I've got it. That's right, we're gonna be using a fire extinguisher bracket. Now, pickings are kind of slim right now because we're still shut down. Um, so this one's a little bit on the big side. It's all I could find at Home Depot. So we're gonna have to figure out a way to pad in uh, the distance between the bracket and the can. Now I have some ideas. Uh, first of all, we're gonna try some carpet padding. Just wrap the can in some carpet padding and it should give us the needed cushioning. I mean, it could fly out of the thing and you know explode. Who knows what'll happen? I mean, I, I don't have a whole lot of sense here. I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't even be showing you how to do this. But you know, here we are, it's a rainy day. Uh, we're in lockdown and I need to figure out something to do. So <laughs> here we are, I guess. Um, so we're gonna try that first. You know, another option you can use is maybe a mouse pad, wrap, wrap the can in a mouse pad and put it in here. But in the future, if we find a smaller bracket that fits a little bit better, we'll give that one a shot too. I thought about using one of these and wrapping the can in that. The only thing is they're kind of a pain in the butt because you gotta use a screwdriver in there. Yes, I know there's ones with the little thumb screw thing, but that's not what I have. And again, we're shut down right now. I can't go anywhere. Oh, you just want your iced tea drink. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but anyways, let's give it a shot with the carpet padding first. We'll see what happens. If it works great, uh, we'll use it as a, a benchmark for a future upgrade or whatever. Uh, but at least it gives us a proof of concept and we can move on from there. We shall see. Right, guys, before we get started mocking this up, I just want to mention that my saw is in its most retracted position. And what I mean by that is as the blade reciprocates, the the little uh, chuck in here goes up and down, right? So if you put this bracket too far up on the blade, uh, you know, and this does vary by saw, keep that in mind, you may risk smashing this bracket into the base of your saw and you'll probably make quite a mess. So it's very important to start with your blade already in its most retracted position, set your bracket where you need it to be. And I think uh, probably about right there should work for us. And uh, I, I, like I said before, I don't have a lot of sense doing this, but we'll see what happens. Now you could possibly use the pre-existing holes in here, but my concern is that it will be off balance and they may cause some issues with the agitation. You know, it may work fine. We could try it again in the future, but I think just for the sake of safety and uh, just, for the heck, just for the heck of it, I'm just gonna drill a hole right here to match this one. And we'll try to keep it nice and as centered as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be close enough. So we'll use this hole as our first baseline. And uh, you know, we're gonna keep it probably about half an inch from the from the bracket there. I think that should do. So I'm just in there just scratching it up. You know, you can use a pen, of course. I'm just using what I happen to have right here. Yep, and there it is right there. Uh, in fact, I'll actually take a pencil and mark a little X right about there. Now let's see what size hole this is. That looks like about an eighth of an inch would be my guess. About an eighth of an inch. <sighs> Money, that's perfect. Okay. Perfect, so I got the screw in there, just hand tightened for now. I'm just gonna drill it right there. In fact, I'm not even gonna measure it. Just do it, screw it. So we'll go ahead and just drill both of these together. Make it happen. All right, and we're through. All right guys, so it looks like the quarter inch screw went in perfectly. Let's go ahead and test fit a can real quick and uh, move on to the next segment here. As you can see, it's 
It's quite a bit larger. Let's take care of that. <laughs> Look at that can. He's cozy. He's cozy in there. Let's give it a shot. Can't believe I'm about to do this. Uh, make sure you wear some safety glasses because you don't want to hit yourself in the face. In fact, I'm going to kind of hold it like this. Gonna, let's just do it slowly just to see. That can is definitely moving. So I think we need to try out the other clamp system because this just isn't tight enough. Did you see it move? Did you see it move? Watch. I mean, it, it definitely works. We just have to make sure we have our clamp situation better situated. All right, guys, so I went ahead and just put an extra clamp on it. I don't know if it's gonna work, but hopefully it will. You know, the thing is, is we need to find a better quick release solution to this, but until we kind of open up and we're able to access, you know, goods and services a little bit better, we're gonna have to kind of make do with what we got here, which is it's kind of janky, but it might work, it might work. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. <laughs> That's what I was worried about. So I guess we're gonna have to have a part two to this video because there's more to learn. There's more to learn. Anyways, before I get going, why don't we do this? Let's do some soapbox. Now, if you guys want to get featured in the soapbox, all you got to do is send me your edited or unedited video to gr at artprimo.com, gr at artprimo.com. It can be a review. It can be you just showing your skills. It can be you painting a piece somewhere. It could be you doing a production. It could be anything, street art, weaker furniture. I don't care. Send it to me. Let me see what you got. Um, one thing I do have to say is if you are in the wild doing something <clears throat> unauthorized, cover your face, okay? 
<laughs> now this is a video from artprimo.com. As you can see, we like to have a lot of fun here, try different stuff. Uh, this video is a perfect example. So be sure to give us a subscribe. Be sure to give us a follow, hit the bell, do all that stuff that you're supposed to do because that's how it works these days. Also, if you have any suggestions on how we can improve on this project, be sure to comment below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. I definitely check out the comments. And if you want a hit off, that is how you get one. Put it, put a little comment below for a hit off. The more interesting the comment, the more likely you are to get one. And if you're looking for graph supplies, art supplies, street art supplies, or anything to gussy up your vintage wicker furniture, Give us a call at artprimo.com, artprimo.com, artprimo.com. It's 206-365-4083. That's 206-365-4083. That's artprimo.com, your number one source. What is the best tool to do this? I got it. Ouch. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That wasn't very safe. <laughs>